Yeah, this is Mighty San Quinn. You're sitting there with Thizzler. Thizzler.com. You can subscribe to Thizzler below and be tapped into the Thizzler, man. Get all the music, man. Well, what brought me into music is that um, I'm the oldest man in my family, growing up in Fillmore. So I got bullied. Got, you know, I beat up a lot, you know, Project Kids. I didn't have a man, to, you know, a big cousin to run to with a name. It was all about a name. You dig what I'm saying? Whether you was related to a family, like the Mays family or the Hill family, you dig what I'm saying? Or you was, you know, somebody who had a name in the street that had hella brothers, cousins, or you was in a gang. Uh, so uh, I was the first boy during, during the drug era. So, you know, I had to worry about my safety a lot growing up where I grew up in the houses in Fillmore with all the projects and shit down the street. So I just was like, I want to have a name for myself. So it's like either you sell drugs, you play ball, and then they had this rap shit, you feel me? So uh, I ended up being, you know, I ended up doing a song like when I was 12 years old with my partner Ive Low, Ivory Low, uh, Ive Low from KO. That's Eddie Street, that's where Mess from. Uh, I did a song with him, like a tape, you know what I mean? It was, it was tapes back then. And uh, I did a tape, kicked the freestyle, and kind of like got around the neighborhood, and my name got the buzzing, you dig what I'm saying? And then, um, the dude from Board Stiff named White Mike named me San Quinn when I was 12 years old. So I've been San Quinn since I was 12 years old. That's what got me into it. That uh, I just wanted to have a name for myself where people knew who I was. I got a new album called 89. 89, I want you to check out 89. It's uh, produced entirely by Living Proof. Living Proof, big shout out to my boy Living Proof. I uh, met with my, me and my boy Primo, Primo Management. We dropped 89, it's about the, uh, basically it's describing 89, the year 89 when the earthquake hit. So it's like San Quentin, earthquake, San Francisco, 89, you know what I mean? So we dropped it on Wednesday, October 17th, 29 years to the day that the earthquake hit. So it's all good science and mathematics. So it's a good album featuring Keith the Sneak, Shady Nate, uh, Fab, uh, let me see, Be The Weeda, Jug Mouth, uh, damn, I forgot the, uh, I mean, it's just a bunch of us on there, but you know what I mean? Oh, Mickey Shiloh, that's the girl's name that sings on the song, Do You, you dig what I'm saying? And um, Living Proof Beats, it's a great album. It's an EP, it's not even an album, it's an EP. So, you know, that's, that's what's up with that. It's a good album. I want everybody to pick it up. I do remember, yep, I do remember the day. The earthquake hit. I, I was going to Mission Dolores Middle School. I went to Catholic school from kindergarten to eighth grade. So I was at basketball practice. And um, the thing that made it funny is that the, the street cars go by on Dolores and Church. So the ground always would shake when the street cars would go by. So I'm thinking it's just a street car. You know what I mean? Just rumbling. But it really was the earthquake. So I couldn't tell was it the street car or the earthquake. Cause it seemed like the streetcar was going by at the same time the earthquake hit, but I guess it was the earthquake. I seen the ground kind of, I seen the ground go like, like you know, almost 90 degrees and wave. And, you know, down there in Mission Dolores, that's like one of the oldest places in San Francisco. So I'm surprised it just didn't crumble down there, but it, it did. Then after I left uh, basketball practice, just all the lights was out. None of the buses was running. And then, you know, let the looting begin. It was big looting going on. Just people running out of Safeway, running out of everywhere. Blockbuster. It was like, it was like, the, it was like the end of the world. You know what I mean? And, and once the nighttime hit, I was in the house, but I heard it got real nasty in, in the nighttime as far as the thievery was big. Yeah. Well, mess is a... He happened to be my cousin through marriage. Yeah, yeah, but I didn't know that at the time. We got a real big family. Uh, what happened is that uh, I just got through fucking with JT. I put out my album, uh, The Hustle Continues, which was on Get Low, Priority Records. But I thought I, was, I thought I was signing Priority, but I wasn't, I was signing JT. So this big album that I thought I was gonna get uh, billboards for, and. You know what I mean? Because JT had big billboards on Sunset Boulevard, bus benches. He had the interview with Big Les on Rap City. He was in all the major publications, uh, Rap Pages, The Source, Vibe, you name it. You did, because uh, he signed an artist deal to them. 
me, I signed it, him to his record label, which uh, it still was exposure. I love JT for putting me on. You know, I still want my one on one. You feel me? You know what I'm talking about. But um, uh, I got a magazine out in the 4080, and my video was on Soul Beat. So I was hurt. You dig what I'm saying? Because I'm writing for the world. I'm 18 years old. Uh, the record Shock the Party came out of that. It's still a record that people <clears throat> play to this day. But so I, I was, you know, I left JT at that time. And it was a dude named Hearn. Big shout out Marzette Parker, my partner doing time, 28 years in the penitentiary right now. I uh, hope you win your appeal. You definitely are innocent. Big shout out to my little nephew Coop and all the rest of your 10 or 15 brothers and sisters. Uh, one of them guys from the hood that had that paper, you dig what I'm saying? And uh, he had bought beats from the East Bay. Like, San Francisco people never really got on in Oakland. You feel what I'm saying? So he had bought beats from Mike Mosley, Tom Capone, like all the top producers over here. And the album, he really had bought it from my partner, Trev G, that's from KO, like Marv, too. But Trev didn't, wasn't doing nothing with the shit, you feel me? So Mac Minister, you know, Freedom Mac Minister, you dig what I'm saying? Mac Minister plugged me in with Hearn from Page Street. Hearn was a nigga that was balling, you feel me? That had paper and he had spent like, he spent some good money on that, you know, on, the, on the beats. So he's gonna just do the album with me. But I'm, I haven't been a selfish person at all, none of my career. So uh, I heard Messi Marv was kicking up dust down there in KO, you feel me? And I was like, man, shit, you might as well put me and him together. We gonna be like, run DMC, man. He was like, who is he? Cause Marv wasn't known like me. Uh, he was out there. But I was known for rapping. I was like on my third album. Marv just said, you know, uh, you know, just had dropped his out messy situations, but I knew the nigga was nice, you know what I'm saying? He was a fresh nigga. That's when he had his perm and shit, you know what I mean? And he was a known little shooter from down there, you dig, and getting his money. So uh, we both just like the same age, you feel what I'm saying? So I told her, man, why don't you do that with me and him? And then it was history from there. Explosive mode was made, you feel what I'm saying? I'm like 75 days clean, okay. you feel me? So I kicked it, you dig know what I'm saying? Just opioid addiction, period. Not just the H, but uh, people on Narcos and, and Zanny, or Zanny's a benzo. Just the, the pill epidemic, the heroin epidemic is horrible in our community now. You dig know what I'm saying? It's killing a lot of people. So I wasn't glamorizing it. It was just, just letting you know that I was kicking that situation. It snuck up on me. but. Uh, I, I am clean, you know, those amount of days. And I'm really trying not to count because they say you shouldn't count, but you know, I've been cool, you feel me?